Hello, I'm Nancy Wilkins, and today I need to make myself some decorated envelopes, and I thought you'd like to see how I make them. So first of all, you, you got to choose your envelopes, and I did this, are just old cheapy ones from Walmart. Well, not cheapy cheapy, but you know, they they will do, and I um, try, try and keep a good supply of this size on hand, so I have 25 of them here. This helps when you're going from one step to another, waiting for paint to dry and so forth. And I'll show you what I mean. And then the paint that I use today is on Dilutions. I like to use Dilutions because it's a permanent paint. And um, I don't worry about it running when I uh, put it on my envelopes. Like if you make this nice pretty card and it gets a little wet and the paint runs onto the card you made, then you, you, <laughs> that envelope has ruined your card. So I want to get something that, I like to use something that won't run. Something that's permanent, it's a die. Right, so I basically just start with one color. Let's just start with this green here. It's um, fresh lime. <laughs> I love this color. I love Dilutions paint to begin with. So I just basically, um, and you don't need a little bit. I'm going to put a little spot here and a little spot there. And because this paint dries so fast, I'm going to go ahead and do the back while I'm at it. And sometimes I try and connect, see where I want to make it look like it's going to come around the side and put some paint here. And the first color you use, is you need to put a little bit more of it on because it's not going to have it as much showing. And I'm going to do a few card, a few envelopes. Just put a little spots. And I'm getting a little too much ink here. Too much paint. And I do basic, what I really will do in real life when I'm not trying to record is do all 25 of them. And then by the time I'm done with the 25th one, the first one is absolutely dry, but I'm going to just do five of them today. I'm not going to make you watch me do 25, or not make you, but I'm not going to try and record all 25. And as you can see, I tend to, because I did it this way, I'm tending to do the same thing on each card. That's not what I want to do. Get up there and... This has such a vivid color. When I put it in a bucket of water or my water bottle to uh, keep it from setting up, it will cover that whole, <laughs> that water almost gets strong enough with pigment to paint with. It's, I love this paint. Okay, there's the green. I have five of them done. So I'll put the lid on, take a rag, and that's, now this is permanent. If you get it on your clothes, you're not going to like it because it won't come out. So you might want to make sure if you're using this paint that you use, that you're wearing some. I'm not going to go with purple, I'm going to go with turquoise. I generally will do purple last because... The purple doesn't play too well with others, no matter what the paint is. And this is not as full. And so I'm going to smush it in there. And it's, the green was a new one, so it had a whole lot more in it. And the lid was a whole lot more. Had a whole lot more. I, I, it doesn't take much paint. Can't tell you how many hundreds of envelopes I've done. Well, I can't swear it's hundreds. 
And I know it feels like it. I know dozens and dozens and dozens. See, I kind of pull up a little bit of paint from the main bottle. And then I'm going to smoosh it just a little bit so not, it's kind of like the equivalent of stamping up when you're rubber stamping. And I'm making blotches. There's another one. And see, it's making a mess on the, the mat. But thankfully, the mat will clean off. And you can see why I said when you, your first color, you need to make the make it bigger because you're going to be overriding it. You're going to be over painting or going over top of it because you you're gonna when I get done every bit of this surface of these envelopes will be painted I don't know what color this is called, but it should be called neon orange. Reminds me of the color of the jumpsuits our prisoners wear here in Texas. By now you got the point of how I'm doing this. So I'm going to turn this off and finish up with different colors. And when I'm done with that, I'll come back and show you my next step. Okay, I'm back. All of these have been painted. And I want to point out something. I raised the flap and paint it underneath them because sometimes when you fill an envelope it's too full and you'll have a little spot that won't do and a light strip there wouldn't look that nice so i kind of want to i didn't do it too much on them and i did end up putting purple on and we'll show you like when you put purple on green you get brown if you put purple on blue it's just more purple if you put purple on pink, it just turns to pink. So you got to be careful where you're going to put your purple. I didn't mind a little bit of brown here and there. And also, you look, there's smudges. Smudges are okay. So the next thing we're going to do is add some noise. And what I mean by noise, we're going to put some background stamps on these to kind of blend all these together. Of course, my favorite one is... Um, this is a text stamp, and that's what I'll start with. And I'll either use stays on, or I'll use archival ink. Both of these are permanent, just like the paint is, so I don't worry about them running. Let's just try. And I don't stamp up, I don't ink up the whole pad. I want it, I don't want straight edges. And I just bang. Can you hear that bang? There, that's done. Can you see? You can't really see how much is done 
until I put it up. And see, that's all I'm going to put on that stamp. I'm using a stamp. And I just kind of randomly pat. And that's enough. I don't want it real dark. Let's see if I can go again. Sometimes I can. Just a little bit. And when it starts getting too light, you put a little more ink on. And... Uh, this is a way to take out your frustration. These um, big block stamps take a little pounding when you don't want to have to stand there and press them down and bang them down. All right, so I got that on. Another thing, let's see, do I want to put another color on? Let's use, let's put some dots on. Let's see, do I have, let me get a, Let's put, these are dots. We've done the manuscript. This just stays on green. I don't remember exactly what the green looks like. I think it's more of a turquoise. Oh, see? See, I'm putting dots. My favorite thing. Oops, didn't put it on the... And again, I'm not trying to get the whole stamp because I don't want straight edges on these and so I've got all of these stamped with dots and they're beginning to look like a mixed media aren't they beginning to look interesting all right and here's some red and this archival red and another one of my favorites this is a cross hatch yeah, it's like a grid. I don't know if you can see the grid. Oh, yeah. See the grid? And, um, it's beginning to look really interesting. And the, now you're seeing why it doesn't matter about the um, colors being even or, or um, smear, smeared or whatever. Because they're beginning to look natural or look like they should. Like this is the way they're supposed to look. Now I have... Um, this is like a leaf stamp, and it makes them interesting. I'm going to use the archival for this. And see how it, this brings, let's see if I can I'll put it over here, put it over here. So you can see the little, that's a little bit of interest in there. Just a little noise, visual noise different kind of visual noise and I'm just really inking the top of the leaf and I don't know how long I've had this I know I've had it at least 17 years so I don't even know if it's still available but it's like you can this is how you can get you don't have to have stamps made just for texture. For example, this is a new stamp from Technique Tuesday. And it has these little X's. These are X's. And we haven't used the blue. Let's use the blue and see what happens. Let's put the lid on that. This is a blue archival ink and then I might be a little more careful stamping that okay you can't really tell there's a difference between it and the here's the X's but it doesn't look add anything more than what the grid does so that's not worthwhile my time but if you didn't have the grid, that would be a great stamp to use. This is like Harlequin Triangles. Oh, that's kind of cool. Let's 
see. This is Technique Tuesday, and it's showing up on those dark spots where I need something to show up. On this dark purple. See how it shows up on that dark purple? And giving me some visual interest there. And we're just moving on. All right, so we got all five of them done this way. So we got the stamping done. And I'm going to get out the supplies for the next step and be right back. All right, for this next step, it's time to put an address space or label on here. Not to put the address itself on, but a place that you can write the address on. Post office needs to be able to read where this is going. You can just use an index card. You can use plain paper. You know, this is scrapbooking paper. I like to use these, um, what do they call them? Story cards from Tuesday morning. This is um, some scrapbook paper with lines on it. This, plate, this paper had green on one side, but it had a grid on the other, and it would make a great label. This would not do. This is too busy. If you wrote a label on it, it would be lost. So not this, okay? Um, like a grid would work. But I just pulled out some of these for you to see that you could use. I got these out of my scrap bin. You can tell they've been used. But they work, make good labels. And I'm just going to go with these um, Tuesday morning cards. I'm cutting them in half. Because if for an envelope, you don't need that big enough of an address area. And then for the return address, of course, I put my own label on there with my address on. So I use, this is called Yes Glue, Yes Paste. And this stuff can be very sticky. And I kind of trust it to stay where I'm putting it. And I just, let's see, we want to do it this side. Put some of this, and I want to get all the way to the edge. You do not want little ends poking up because those little ends that don't get glued down are what will catch on something and pull that label off. Okay, so this is the top. So this label is going to go right here. There's a label. Put that says memory on one side. We don't need that showing. I got a whole bunch of these from Tuesday morning when I bought their um, surprise box. I don't know what it's called, their warehouse clean out box that you just pay X amount of dollars and you don't know what you're getting, but you know you're going to get more than what you paid for. And I like Tuesday morning stuff, and they, they came through. They had a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. So these that makes these ready to use. You want your envelopes ready to use. You don't have to dig out the glue or whatever to put a address space on it. There's the top. And the fifth one. This will work. And I don't worry about how much I put on here. I'm probably putting way too much. That a better safe than sorry. Here it goes. And when I use this yes paste, I always have a wet rag handy. I don't open it up unless I have a wet rag handy to get this stuff off of wherever. And this, this might be weird to you, but I'm cleaning off the top of the label. This is just very, very little watering. It's damp, but it's getting the sticky off the label. Because when you go to write on this, you want to be able to write. You don't want it having that yes paste interfering with how your ink sits on the, the label. around the edges. Okay, let's get it off of here. Okay, now it's time to doodle. 
and I've got out my markers. Now, white and black is basically what I do. And I put, sometimes I put these little ruffles on them and just go all the way around. I can put them around the envelope. I can even put them around the address label. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, this is why you need the address label on first before you doodle so you know what, what room you have to put your doodles. And I'll make a box around the address label because you really want that postman to see where it's going. Mm. Put some swirls. And let's put a, a flower. Oh, it's a sun, isn't it? So let's put a little happy face on the sun. And a couple birds flying. That, wouldn't you be happy to receive uh, something in that kind of envelope? That's kind of nice. Let's see what we can do with this one. Let's make a flower. We made a sun. Just a flower peeking over the edge of this envelope. And some little bitty flowers. If you get, I got kind of a big tip marker here. And I think, okay. And then, okay, here's where I like to use my white. I'm going to take my white. Let's see where I put that swirl in. And I'm going to take my white and just... I probably should have taken my Posca pen. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get my Posca pen and go over those white dots because they're not showing up very good. Well, it's got black on it. I waited. I didn't wait long enough. And I might going to take, see how I'm making a little trails, see the little trail with my white marker. And that's not a Posca pen. No wonder it's not showing up. Let me get my real <laughs> Posca pen. There it is. That will show up. Let's see. Yeah. Really, really white. These pens are the best white pens I've ever seen. They don't dry up. Basically, they're pipe paint pens. Let me see what we can do on the back. Let's do a, a little trail. And then let's take, like I said, that was kind of a big tip I want. Now, here we go. You see what I'm drawing? I'm drawing an eight. Choose a letter that you really know how to draw. Like, do you know how to draw an A? Then do an A. And just write it all the way across. Does it look like an A to you? When you put a bunch of them together, it does, and it just looks like a, a doodle. An A. And let's take the Posca pen. Oh. 
one more one. Let's make a butterfly. See, that's a B. See your B, the letter B, and there's a backwards B. And you have a butterfly. And let's do another one. Let's do a little one, a letter B. And then another, just to make the big one. So the big one doesn't get lonely. <laughs> and let's get the cat for this one. And get out the thick. This is doodle. Doodle on your envelopes. These are M's. I'm drawing my M's. And it doesn't have to be all the way around. It could just be top and bottom or just the bottom. And that's how I make my envelopes. Put my stamps here. And when you send something this kind of envelope, you want to make sure that you don't just, that you use a commemorative stamp. Don't use a regular stamp. You need a commemorative stamp to go on this. And put your return address on the corner. Now you can always put your return address on this side, just as long as it's on the envelope somewhere. And I'm gonna highlight where this is going to go. And those are how I make my my envelopes. Now, now generally I never make just five at a time. I make 20. As you're going to um, make them, make them. Uh, I go through envelopes, a bunch of them up. See, I haven't finished that one, I haven't done anything to that one. But um, that's one way I decorate an envelope. Of course, you can always take your rubber stamps and put stamping stuff on it and everything. But what I would say, be, show a little courtesy to the other people mailing because not only if this ran, not only would it ruin what's inside your envelope, but it would ruin what's inside other people's envelope if they got wet. So show a little courtesy and think ahead and try and use dye inks, things that will not run if they get wet. Um, but I hope you make some. Or maybe I'll receive something from you one day with a decorated envelope. But thank you for watching.